Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the i3 lineup from Intel. This one is the 8350K, which is a processor I probably never should have bought, but it does overclock really well. You can hit almost five gigahertz on it. But I wanna talk about why the i3 lineup is going through a bit of an identity crisis for Intel right now, and why I really think they either need to either drop the uh, price of these processors a lot to make them much more competitive, or perhaps maybe even it's time to uh, bid farewell to the widespread usage of these quad core and quad thread processors. Now, before I get started, I do want to lead off with this thought that quad cores are still a useful item for a lot of work cases and a lot of scenarios, especially if you're just building sort of a mid tier to lower tier gaming rig, four cores and eight threads is absolutely enough to get gaming done. So my biggest contention with this i3 lineup and the thing I really think Intel needs to do to make the i3s relevant again is keep them as quad cores, just add hyper threading to them. And this idea mostly comes out of the idea that AMD continues to up cores and up thread counts. In fact, they're upping their core and thread counts again with Ryzen 3000 here in about a week. So I really think it's important for Intel to at least keep sort of up, especially on the uh, Ryzen APUs where we have right now the 2400G is a quad core eight threaded processor. The i3s could compete with that if they just had hyper threading unlocked on them. And then you would have a four core eight thread processor with integrated graphics. Sure, they wouldn't be able to game as well as the 2400G because AMD's integrated graphics are far superior, but at least with the core and thread counts, they would be on parity with AMD and they would have the CPU advantage uh, where the Intel, at least the Coffee Lake architecture is still better than the Zen Plus architecture. So getting started going through some of the lineup of the i3 processors, we're not gonna touch all of them all because there are a lot of different SKUs, but the i3-9100 here features a max turbo frequency of 4.2 gigahertz with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz. And this again is a quad core quad thread processor and it's $122 recommended price is a little bit high when you consider that you can get Ryzen 1600s right now for $110, $115 all day long. And I've seen recent sales where these 1600s are as low as $100, or if you're lucky enough to live near a micro center, you can actually get them for something like $80 plus getting a motherboard with them leads to an additional discount. So you can get onto the Ryzen platform with six cores and 12 threads, a lot cheaper than the Intel platform. Now, obviously with the 1600, you would have to pair it with a GPU to get up and running because the 1600 has no integrated graphics whatsoever, which if you're building a gaming PC is no problem. But if you're just looking for a general use computer, then maybe the Ryzen 2400G would be a better option, which does feature better graphics than the Intel unit, which is actually far superior graphics. You could actually game on the 2400G, but it's also roughly the same cost and it does feature four cores and eight threads though the IPC, the actual single threaded performance will be better on the i3 processors because again, the 2400G is on the Zen Plus architecture, which IPC is a weakness of the Zen and Zen Plus architecture when you're comparing it to the most recent Coffee Lake processors. And this is the major identity crisis I think the i3s are currently going through, is that if you're looking for a general use computer, you can actually get away with a lot lighter of a CPU than a four core, four threaded CPU, even in 2019, something like a Ryzen 2200G, which is significantly cheaper than this i3-9100, will get the job done and you're gonna save quite a bit of money by going with the Ryzen 2200G as opposed to this 9100. And those same points are gonna to apply to other i3 processors as well. The 9300, for example, bumps the price up by about $20 while only giving you a little bit of a performance boost in the clock speed department. And as you continue to bump up the price, these i3 processors actually start competing with second generation Ryzen processors, which do give us a very modest IPC gain, but they also give us a nice little bump in clock speeds as well. So these i3 processors, not only are they not competing at the low end because you can get cheaper and still do everything that you would need to do as well, but if you're looking for more power, they don't compete with AMD's processors that are giving you a lot more power for the same or even lesser cost. And then Intel starts to compete with itself when it gets to the 9350K where that price is starting to bump up against other processors that just have more cores like the i5-9400 where you're gonna be paying about the same price and while you will get better single threaded performance out of the i3, again, you're gonna get a significant bump in multi-threaded performance by going with the i5 processors because you're just getting extra cores. You're getting two more cores with the i5 compared to the i3. And that 
that's not even to mention that these i3 K-SKU processors, they don't come with a cooler. So you have to invest more money if you don't already have a cooler laying around. You're gonna have to buy like a 20, 25, $30 cooler to get this thing up and running, especially if you wanna overclock it to a decent clock. Like you could probably get them very easily, especially the 9000 series to five gigahertz across all four cores, but you have to invest that extra 25, $30, which drives up the total cost of the CPU to about $200, where it's actually more expensive than those i5 9400s and the 9400 comes with a cooler that's gonna be just perfectly adequate for running it at its base clock and even getting a little bit of its turbo clock. So this is my plea to Intel. Intel, you have a quad core processor and you've been playing around in the latest generations with your hyper threading. You know, you went from the 8000 series with the 8700K, a six core and 12 thread part, and then you moved over to the 9700K, which is just an eight core part with no hyper threading. It's kind of this weird trade off where you're trading hyper threading, so you're losing threads, but you're getting a couple of physical cores. How about this Intel? Make your i3s relevant by just adding hyper threading to them. Then you have a four core and eight threaded part. Now that will probably intrude a little bit onto your i5 processors, but hey, maybe you give the i5s the same treatment, give them six cores and 12 threads and just lock them down. Maybe don't even offer K SKUs or better yet, just unlock everything, add hyper threading to everything because with the 3000 generation from AMD, it's starting to get really hard to recommend Intel processors, especially once those AMD processors are readily available because I'm sure they'll sell out pretty quick at launch. But once they're readily available at the cheap cost, they're all unlocked. And right now I believe they all also feature SMT, that's simultaneous multi-threading, which is you know AMD's version of hyper-threading. It's really hard to recommend a four core, four threaded part that's going up against in pricing against six core and 12 thread parts like the 1600 or even the 2600. Intel needs to fix its i3 brand or rather its i3 SKUs. And I really think that adding hyper threading at least gets them back onto being close to competitive. But those are just my thoughts. I wanna hear from you. Let me know in those comments down below. Are you somebody that's rocking an i3 processor, especially if you're a gamer? Is this a processor that you would even consider? Or are you just going AMD? Or are you going i5s, i7s? What's your case? What do you think about the i3s let me know those thoughts down below and of course if you like this video give it a like share subscribe comment all those things are helpful to the channel you can follow me both on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video